G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for yet another video of Just The Tips, round three edition, uh, after a diabolical week of tipping for myself, and um, I would say a lot of people, but I am plummeting down the True Footy rankings, and it's already getting to the point where I'm too far back to even make a dent this year, but I'm determined to at least break into the top half and be you know, somewhat respectable at tipping, considering I do a footy tipping show. Um, it's incredible how bad I am. Regardless, uh, I think there's some really, really good matchups coming up for round three in particular, um, and potential grand final preview coming, who knows? There is, of course, the Western Derby as well, which uh, I've said in previous videos, Druzy and I will be recording a standalone Derby preview uh, for the game that takes place on Sunday. I think we're also both streaming on our respective channels. Uh, so if you enjoy the sort of live stream game, uh, make sure you check out either one of our channels, preferably True Footy, but either way, I'm sure you'll, in the past, people flick between Druzy and mine, depending on how the game's going. But uh, hopefully it's a good contest and the Eagles don't shit the bed in a big rivalry game. As is customary on Just The Tips, we will talk through uh, all of those who are doing well in both the footy tipping and the fantasy competition that we run here at True Footy HQ. So for my tips, I was going one from the first six. I got the f one tip right out of the first six games last week. That is, that is just deplorable. Uh, and then I ended up getting all of the Sunday results correct. Thankfully, the Eagles repaid my faith uh, when I wasn't confident, I tipped them anyway, and they ended up pulling through. So I got, ended up with four correct tips, which puts me at 463rd out of about 800 or so. Actually, you know what? I think there's more than 1,000 people in the league, but it says 800 because heaps of people are, are tired or whatever. So I'm in the top half for now. It'd be nice to uh, to really bring that down a little bit so that people don't lose interest in my footy tips. Um, so I've got nine with the margin of 37. The round two winner will shout out as well. The username is a series of question marks. So unfortunately, I can't give them a proper shout out, but uh, they got eight correct tips with a margin of seven, uh, so which means that the second week in a row, uh, no one has been able to get all nine tips correct, as you kind of expect at the start of the season, but it has been tricky. And the overall tipping leader for the second week in a row is Guy Will Win, who has 15 correct tips and a margin of 30. And our fantasy leader is someone called Ashcroft's Armada with an average of 21.54. So well done to all of those who are doing well in their respective competitions. I am doing poorly in both. We will shout out quickly before we get into the tips, the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com for all your manscaping needs, whether it be the body hair trimmer, the lawnmower 4.0, or all the amazing accessories that you can get, the lotions, the moisturizers, the deodorants, uh, the pair of boxes that they have. There's a full range of stuff you can get from manscaped.com. And the cool thing is you get 20% off and free shipping on all of their products simply by being a True Footy user and using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. We're coming to the end of a, of of a, of a beautiful summer here in uh, in Australia and particularly in Perth. The weather's still pretty good for a little bit longer, which means I need to get to the beach and enjoy the Perth weather for the last couple of weeks that I'm in the country. And as such, I need to make sure that I manscape for all the lucky ladies out there. The Lawnmower 4.0 is genuinely a great product and it gets the job done very, very quickly and easily. It's got an LED light. I can use it in the shower because it's waterproof and it's ceramic bladed. So it reduces those nicks and cuts on your delicate area. So it's all great stuff. So if you do go check it out, make sure you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 and don't miss out on that discount and the free shipping. But without further ado, let's get into the round three set of games. Um, and there's some really good contests coming up. Um, like I said, potential grand final preview. Of course, uh, you've got the showdown this week and you've got the Western Derby. And uh, you've got a couple of games where couple of teams are 0-2 or 2-0, and there's a really good chance for them to really either rescue their season or really legitimize themselves as a good quality team. Um, you know, I'm thinking St Kilda and North Melbourne, it'd be interesting to see whether they can go 3-0. and um, I think there's a good chance, but we'll get into all of that. But we start the round with a really, really good contest, and the Bulldogs are a side who are hosting the, the Lions, obviously, in this game at Marvel Stadium. They're a side that's 0-2, and, and if you look down here, they're 17th on the ladder, and uh, played some really not compelling football so far. They've looked a little bit slow and, um, you know, there's been talk about the way they structure up, but I think there's a deeper issue than that at the moment. So they've looked poor, but you can't deny the star-studded talent in that side. So they're always going to be a chance against Brisbane, who, after a poor round one, came out and played really, really well against Melbourne. Only won the game by 11 points in the end, but of course there was a stoppage. So I think I'd rather assess them on when the game was there to be won. How did they play? And they played really, really well, looked very clean and slick. Um, you know, despite the fact that it was up at the Gabba where it's notoriously hard to get a clean, clean set of hands on the ball. 
Um, so I was really, really impressed by the Brisbane Lions, but I don't think this will be a walk in the park by any stretch because the Bulldogs have great capacity to to beat some quality teams when they want to. It's just been a case of consistency for them. So I'm interested. I'm interested to see this season's almost on the line. The Bulldogs, you know, to go 0 and 3. And with the percentage looking like that at the moment, it would be a really, really bad start. And this is a a pressure sort of um, in, or pressured environment at the moment for Beveridge, I think is a contract here. Um, and yeah, this is a really must win game for them already. That being said, with the form the, sh- the Lions showed last week, I don't think I can have any confidence in the Bulldogs at the moment, which means this is the round that they'll prove me wrong, um, as I so often use that phrase, but it is bloody true. So we can't just tip on form lines, but at the moment, who are you going to have more confidence in? Even at Marvel Stadium, um, I think the lines will be too good here, to be honest. Um, it'll be an interesting midfield battle, two very strong midfields. Dunkley against his old side, which is another reason to watch this game. I think the Lions will be too strong, and I'll tip them to win by 23 points. Then you've got another really, really good game at the MCG, Collingwood and Richmond. Uh, always a, a really good contest in the sense that it's two big Victorian clubs, but even just as they intersect at this current point of the season, uh, two really strong-looking sides at the moment. No more, None more so than Collingwood at the moment, I'd say. They're the form side of the competition, having just belted Port Adelaide by 71 points in Round 2 and knocked off the reigning premiers in Round 1. So... Is there a better form side in the competition than Collingwood? I would argue no, not right now. But it is only round two or round three now. And Richmond have uh, had a pretty solid start to the year. They managed to scrape that draw against Carlton. Um, admittedly, not the most compelling performance from either side in that game, as I've, I've said, but it's worth noting. Put Adelaide to the sword for a half, and then Adelaide, you know, it, it raised that margin of 45 points back to one point before Richmond kicked away, and they won the game by five goals in the end. Six out of a possible eight points, uh, Richmond are going steadily. Uh, I don't know if I have seen enough to really... Give them a strong chance in this game. Sure, they have the capacity to win the game, but they'd really rely on Collingwood not bringing their best performance, which in a big MCG environment, I think is going to be a pretty sellout crowd. Uh, I'm going to say Collingwood are too good to win, to lose this game rather, and they should win this game by 26 points. Then you've got the Hawks and North Melbournes. Uh, Sam Mitchell against Alistair Clarkson in terms of the coaching battle. And uh, obviously Hawthorne, have not had the best start to the year. If you look down at the ladder, they're they're, uh, 42% from the two games they've played, once against Essendon and once against Sydney. You kind of almost give them a pass for losing heavily to Sydney because Sydney are a bloody good side. Uh, But Essendon, I suppose, are still a bit of an unknown quantity at the moment. But regardless, to lose that game by 10 goals or whatever it was, that was alarming to me. And I've I've made this point, I'm a little bit concerned about Hawthorne in the near future. I think there's, there's talent there, undoubtedly, but... When you compare them to someone like a North Melbourne at the moment who have beaten West Coast and then more impressively beat Fremantle in Perth and the way their midfield is getting on top, engineered largely by Luke Davies-Uniak, who at the moment is possibly the form player of the comp, um, I am struggling to see how Hawthorne will be able to cope with North Melbourne on their current form as well. And the Roos, obviously, you know, Nick Lark, he's also winning the common medal. Um, they've got some real firepower now it has to be said you know this game being in Launceston um, sometimes Hawthorne can be tricky down there and they may just snap into gear and play well as they have done so on and off over the last few years this is absolutely a contender for them to lift and surprise everyone and beat North but at the moment on exposed form North Melbourne look very very good and I can't tip against them to be honest so I'm expecting you know Clarkson to get the better of of, uh, Mitchell here and they should win this game by a good six goals I reckon and I think I'm going to potentially regret that because Hawthorne have this knack of making me look silly sometimes. But uh, not that it's hard. But I'll say North win is but game by at least six goals. Then you've got the Giants versus Carlton. Uh, this one should be a somewhat interesting one. I feel like Carlton have a knack for not playing their best against GWS. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. Probably should look that up. Uh, but it's just a gut feeling I have. But regardless, the Giants, after a Decent win against Adelaide when you consider they got a fair way down and came back and won and played some really good footy. And then um, against the Eagles, they were a little bit, um, well, they were blown away in the second quarter. They won three quarters of the game and uh, the Eagles snapped into gear in a way that they haven't for a very long time. So there's some bad luck involved in that. Uh, But it also was a bit of a, well, it's not a ringing endorsement that they've just been beaten by the Eagles. Carlton will be a much tougher opponent. Obviously, uh, they've just coming off a win against the reigning Premier in Geelong. And while it's certainly not the same as beating Geelong, you know, in the peak of finals, 
at the moment. I don't think Geelong are anywhere near the finished article, which I think they will become. Carlton have looked pretty solid. Six points out of a possible eight um, with their draw against Richmond as well. So they're a much more formidable opponent than Adelaide and West Coast. And GWS uh, has a one narrow win out of those two contests. So even at home, I'm not going to tip against Carlton here. They should get the job done. They should get the job done by 26 points, let's call it. It should be a fairly comfortable win for the Blues. Then you've got St Kilda versus Essendon, uh, two sides that I thought were kind of a little bit hard to read going into this season, both with new coaches, Ross Lyon and Brad Scott have taken over, and both of these clubs have exceeded expectations to date. We'll start with St Kilda, who beat Fremantle in round one, um, but by really strangling their, you know, their... Uh, shots on goal, so to speak. So, like, they they got plenty of inside 50s, but Fremantle have this inability to convert. And then they really reinforced the belief that, you know, Ross Lyon has this side playing well when they smashed the doggies by 51 points. Um, and uh, interestingly, have found some really good avenues to goal outside of King and Membry, who are unavailable at the moment. And the defensive pressure has been a real feature. And Essendon equally has played some pretty good football at the moment. Round one, again, they beat the Hawks by 10 goals. But uh, Gold Coast are a, a relatively tough opponent, and they overcame them uh, to win that game by six goals as well. So I'd say out of the two sides, St Kilda has the more compelling form. Essendon might be going a little bit better than we expected in terms of the form that they've shown. They're another side like St Kilda as well, whose uh, who's forward line options are largely unavailable with Wright and Wiedemann and Stringer not playing. So I think St Kilda are a little bit further along, uh, a little bit more mature off the top of my head. And uh, I have a little bit more confidence of Ross Lyon being able to get a hold of Essendon here, particularly without some forward line options. So I think St Kilda will be the better side this year, and I'm going to tip them in this game. And again, they'll go 3-0. and So another side here that is just surprising everyone, and going 3-0 and is a really, really good start to the year. And I will say that they win this game by 18 points. Essendon will be competitive. They, they're looking okay at the moment. Bit of confidence after last week. And uh, it'll be a good game, and St Kilda will win by 18 points. Then we've got the showdown, um, and this one is between two sides that I think going into this year are sort of not miles apart, but certainly I think Port were a more realistic finals contender. And in round one, Smash Brisbane made an absolute statement and then had their asses handed to them in a massive reality check against Collingwood last week. So uh, a pretty Jekyll and Hyde start to the year for Port Adelaide, but I still believe in their their quality and their ability to do well this year. Sometimes the best thing for a side is a big reality check after a big win. So I'm not too concerned for them long-term and I still think they will be a very formidable uh, formidable opponent for the Crows who have had a bit of a lackluster start to the year, had that massive lead against the Giants, let that slip, um, then let Richmond get seven goals or yeah, seven goals in front of them and then nearly came back and won, but ultimately weren't quite good enough. And Richmond is a tough opponent, but again, I don't have a lot of confidence in Adelaide right now to play a full four-quarter performance, which they will need to do to beat Port Adelaide. So there is a chance of an upset here. It's not, it's not that they're miles apart. Adelaide are capable, but on current form, even though the power you know, got blitzed last week, I still think their round one performance is compelling enough for me to say they should put the Crows away here. And I'm going to say... I'm going to say it'll be a good game. I think I think it'll be a thriller. I'll say Port Adelaide are the better side and win by seven points. Then you've got the Gold Coast Suns versus Geelong. Two sides that uh, are 0-2, and, and in, particularly in Geelong's case, we wouldn't have seen that coming at the start of the year. The Suns have had a rocky start to the year. Big loss to Sydney. No real shame in that. And a winnable game against Essendon, uh, and one that they probably wanted to win to demonstrate some genuine improvement on last year, but we didn't quite see it. They hung in there, but ultimately the better side won on the day. So it's not a great start to the year for the Gold Coast Suns and Geelong, regardless of being 0-2. Uh, they've lost to Collingwood and they've lost to Carlton as well, two sides that I expect to feature in September this year. So I think Geelong will be building slowly, and I don't think it'll be slowly enough for me to not tip them in this game. Yes, it's an away game at Metricon. Gold Coast have the ability to win this game, but I would be shocked if Geelong let themselves go 0-3 here. So the superior firepower and experience will win, this, them, the, win them this game by 29 points. Then we've got the game that I'm most looking forward to this, this week, and that's uh, you know outside of the Derby, obviously. But Melbourne taking on Sydney, this is the game that I suggested could be a grand final preview. It's not so much that these are the best two teams in the comp right now, uh, but they're obviously certainly in that mix. 
and probably two of the best three or four sides in the comp. So by, by definition, I think they're a chance to be a grand final preview. So Melbourne obviously blitz the Bulldogs in round one, and then when you look at how the Bulldogs went subsequently, uh, that win is a little bit less compelling than it, it looked you know, in real time. Uh, and then uh, got outclassed by uh, a Brisbane outfit that was too good on the night. So I don't hold that too strongly against Melbourne because I think you know Brisbane have great capacity to compete this year, potentially really deep into, into September with the firepower that they've acquired. And Melbourne finished that game really strongly, but ultimately, you know, before the stoppage, uh, they were getting blitzed, to be honest. And I don't think Brisbane restarted from that game particularly well. Regardless, Melbourne are going to be a good side, so I'm I'm intrigued. I think this will be a good contest. And Sydney have not put a foot wrong this year. They've had two relatively easy opponents. They blitzed Gold Coast, who didn't play well, and they blitzed a Hawthorne side, who, you know, we've talked about, I don't think are going to be very competitive this year against the best sides. So... At the moment, Sydney, slightly more convincing, but easier opponents. The other interesting point about these two sides in this matchup is the head-to-head, and Sydney has won the last two battles between these two sides, and both of them were in Melbourne. So they beat them at the MCG in the qualifying final, and they beat them earlier in the year as well, when admittedly Melbourne weren't playing their best footy. But I still think Sydney will have this confidence, and I wouldn't say they have the wood over Melbourne, but they certainly know how to beat them at the MCG, and uh, I think the Swans are a pretty decent MCG side, aside from the grand final, of course. So I think the Swans will win this. It'll be, it is a bit 50-50. No, neither result will shock me. And it will be one that the Ds will hate to lose because that will make them one and two. But it is a tough opponent. And I think Sydney will win this game by nine points in an absolute belter. Then we've got the final game of the round, the Western Derby. And uh, I'll give you my... Uh, a better thoughts and a, and a more drawn out analysis on the video that I'll record with Drew's later today. Having said that though, Fremantle, really average start to the season, obviously, at, can't buy a goal. Midfield more or less doing its thing, but ultimately the connection to the forward line has been a concern. And, you know, I think North Melbourne should be respected as a decent opponent, but regardless, that's a game that Fremantle needed to win to legitimize themselves a little bit. So to, to lose both games against St Kilda and North while they're playing good footy shows that Fremantle have regressed a little bit. Now, I don't think that's uh, a controversial point. Now, West Coast, by contrast, uh, North Melbourne, tough opponent in round one, and their midfield blitzed ours. North midfield blitzed West Coast, but then it also did a very good job against Fremantle's much more formidable uh, midfield. So when you take that context into account, Um, West Coast don't look as ratchet as they did maybe seven days ago Um, and obviously beat the Giants this week and finally started to look like they're playing a game style that could be competitive. So the thing that gives West Coast a chance in this game is that they have an ability to score, uh, which Fremantle have struggled to do this year. So if it's a free-flowing game and West Coast is able to get enough supply, they're a chance to win this. This is not not a ridiculously outlandish call. That being said, Fremantle's midfield, I think, will make it very, very tough for West Coast. So I'm going to, I'll give you my more detailed thoughts later, but I think Fremantle will make a statement in this game and ultimately win the game by four goals. I don't think they have the capacity to really belt us, as we saw last year when we were playing terrible, and it'll be a hot footy, but Fremantle will win this derby. All right, guys, that is the end of round three. As we look at the ladder, I still have Sydney, Collingwood, and St Kilda and North Melbourne in my top four for going 3-0. and We know the stats around sides going 3-0 and and ultimately, you know, getting close to or making the finals. In fact, I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but generally, if you start in the year 3-0, and I'd say most sides do play finals. And then uh, you look at the bottom of the ladder, Adelaide, Gold Coast, the Western Bulldogs at 0-3, almost ruling themselves out. Um, not not quite, but obviously it's getting a little bit dicey for the dogs if they do lose this game against Brisbane. That's probably all the analysis that really needs to be done on the ladder at this early stage of the season. There's a glut of teams in the middle who could go either way, uh, but the top and the bottom makes for some interesting viewing. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for taking part in this week's Just the Tips. Uh, make sure you let us know in the comment section below what your tips are and uh, what's your upset of the round? What do you think is the juiciest contest? Um, do you think the Eagles are a chance? Actually, save that comment for the derby preview that we're going to do. But either way, guys, appreciate your support lately. Um, keep watching, keep subscribing, keep liking the videos. Really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.